Hello, uh, welcome back to a really, really quick video. Uh, this should only be a couple of minutes long, really. Uh, this is going to be on my new favourite build for electrolyzers. Um, now, this is something that I built on my most recent stream, um, and it's actually still live at the moment for those of you that are watching. Uh, you'll have seen this before. Uh, but basically all this is, we've got the new radiant pipes that have been brought into the game. Um, one of the first applications I've really used them for is for cooling our oxygen that comes into the base from electrolyzers. Uh, so this looks like quite a big build, um, but honestly it's not. It's just that I've done it very large so that you can see that it can scale as big or as small as you want really. Um, so first of all, a quick introduction to what this is. What we've basically got here is a line of electrolyzers on some airflow tile. It doesn't have to be airflow tile, it could be mesh tile, it could be anything really, as long as it's breathable. Um, and within this room, we've got some radiant pipe. Uh, this radiant pipe is just basically a radiator of gold radiant pipe. Uh, it could be a different material if you have lots, but gold is generally something that people tend to have an excess of in their base. So I've just used gold in this example. Um, and all this is, this just zigzags through the build here and goes on top of where our um, oxygen is going to be collected from, which is these pumps at the bottom. We've got an awful lot of gas pipe in here, but ignore this for now. I'll explain this in a moment. Um, our pumps at the bottom here, we've got a, a load of pumps just to collect the oxygen. We've got six electrolyzers in this build, so this could handle quite a throughput. So the, the only bottleneck in here really is how many pumps that you want to put in there. You could put, like I've got eight in here, you could put more by all means. Um, but each of these pumps are, are in pairs. Um, and behind each of these, these pairings of pumps, we've got um, a Atmo sensor and a thermo switch on an AND gate. Dead simple stuff, we've done this before. Um, all this basically does is say if the pressure is above 800 grams and the temperature is below 16 degrees, give a signal and that'll toggle our pumps on. Um, so we've got four of these different pairings and then their pipes just go to different lines coming up here. And I've basically got all my oxygen coming up these pipes and basically going into an overpressurized vent in this chamber. And this just signifies your base or wherever you want your oxygen to go. Um, I wouldn't recommend using this sort of oxygen for exosuits and stuff. I'd just use this for pumping into your base. Um, and then we've got the same thing up here with the hydrogen chamber. This is just where our hydrogen gets filtered out to. Uh, for ease in this build, I've just used normal gas filters. Um, as you probably have seen, I do have a video on making mechanical filters if you want to save yourself a bit of power. Uh, but just for ease, I've just slapped in gas filters everywhere so that you can see where we're, we're actually filtering out our gas. These at the bottom here, um, as you can see, these this pair of pumps get sent to this pipe, to this gas filter, and then these pumps get sent to this gas filter. And then this central line here is for hydrogen. And this just merges into our other hydrogen pipe over here. Same on the left down here. Okay. Now... What we basically have at the top of the build is just some, again, with our new sensors that we've got, we've got these gaseous element sensors. Same principle, we've just got an Atmos sensor and a gaseous element sensor. They're also on an AND gate, and all this is basically saying is if you can detect hydrogen, and if the pressure is above a kilo per tile, then toggle on. And this gives us predominantly hydrogen. We do pick up a little bit of oxygen as well, uh, but for the most part, it's hydrogen. It gets a few small packets of oxygen. Um, and they just get merged back into the main pipe. Now then, that's the, the main bones of the build explained um, in terms of piping and stuff. And again, this is all sort of situational, depending on how you want to run it for your base, how you want to build this, you know, how you want to scale this build for your own use. Um, the main important part is these radiant pipes in this radiator. Now, in our most recent stream playthrough, I was lucky enough to have both a slush geyser and a hot water geyser. Um, we do also have cool steam vents and things like that as well, but just to just to really uh, make this a bit easier to show you on, on debug, I've spawned in a hot water geyser and a slush geyser. A slush geyser, for those of you that don't know, gives you an output of polluted water at minus 10 degrees, which is perfect for this sort of build. If you don't have one of these, you're going to have to create some other way of cooling liquids, whether that be an aqua tuna build or, or wheeze walk cooling room or something like that. And I may do a little video on um, some of the other uses for radiant pipes for cooling liquids soon as well. Uh, but for the most part, we've got a slush geyser. What this slush geyser is basically doing, it's allowing us to pump cold water into our radiator. Now, the way that I've done this is using some of the new sensors again. So our uh, cold water is sat in this pipe. It hits this liquid shutoff here. And this liquid shutoff is on some very, very simple automation. We've basically got a sensor here. And this is one of the new liquid pipe thermo sensors. And all this is basically doing is detecting what temperature the liquid is that's flowing through this pipe. Okay. This sensor here is looking for a temperature as soon as it gets above 14 degrees. Okay. When this sensor goes above 14 degrees, both of these lines of automation will toggle on. 
okay? This line here goes to another liquid shutoff, which will then dump any liquid that's in the pipe out through here, okay? And this is just a waste pipe. This just goes out of the, the radiator and into a little chamber here. You could further use this liquid for cooling batteries or machinery or something like that elsewhere in your base, but because we want to try and get our oxygen at a nice critical, you know, perfect temperature, um, it just gets dumped into a chamber for, for our benefit here. At which point, because the automation is toggled on for this line, this also gets toggled on and replenishes the liquid into the system and allows it to be filled back up. Okay, that's, that's all this is here. Up here we have a little valve, and this valve is basically just reducing the flow to a level that we want. So with the build of this size, I find four, four kilos per tile is about perfect. That just gives us four kilos in each one of these packets, um, and it'll just circulate around the build. I do have a few temp shift plates here. These are just made out of metal. Um, at least I believe they are. Oh, these are out of diamond, and some of these are out of metal, I think. Let's have a look. Yeah, we've got basically temp shift plates, whatever you can make them out of, it doesn't really matter. Um, these are literally just to dissipate the temperature of the piping into the atmosphere, and it just helps spread the temperature a little bit, as you can see. Okay, now at this point in the build, um, this little light is ticked on down here, so I know that our water is dumping out, um, and you'll see how this basically works. So on the automation point, this sensor has noticed that the water has gotten too warm. It's going to toggle this on, which means that our water is being dumped out the system, and more water is being allowed to be pumped in. And that's all this is. It's just a radiator system that will allow you to get your oxygen to a certain temperature using the new radiant pipes. Simple as that. And as you can see, this will keep toggling out. And once this starts bypassing, it means that the water in the radiator has got back to a nice temperature. It's been cycled all the way through. So we're at like 10 degrees, 11 degrees. You can see this is just filtering through now. And if we look at our thermal overlay, you can see the effects of the radiant pipes. They're really, really powerful. So it's a really easy way of getting your oxygen to a, te a specific temperature because cooling gas is so much easier than cooling liquid. So if you've got something like a slush geyser, you can you can really use it for uh, you know cooling a lot of oxygen. Now, as you can see, this liquid shutoff is now toggled off. The automation will be off, meaning that there's no more liquid coming into the build. We're just circulating what we've got. And that's for free, basically. We're moving this liquid for free and just radiating it around in the room. And you can see, oxygen-wise, we're getting a massive throughput of oxygen. Some of these pumps will be off intermittently, depending on how warm the room is or how low pressure the room is. But for the most part, you'll see we're, we're generating a lot of oxygen in here. And these are all full packets as well. These are kilo per tile packets. Uh, so yeah, pretty sweet. I thought I'd share that with you. This is probably going to be my electrolyzer build from here on out because it is it gives you such a massive throughput for such a small amount of energy, really. Um, you don't need masses of cooling. Uh, if you don't have a slush geyser, as I say, there are other means using aqua tuners and things like that to, to cool down liquids. And again, I might do a couple of videos on them shortly. Um, but for now, that's that, really. I hope this helps. I will upload the save so that you can have a look at this in your own time. Um, you can just load the save into your own world and have a play with it. Uh, but any questions, just ask. So much love. Take it easy. Bye-bye.